what Americans do. And apparently the Japanese have been convinced that eating fried chicken, especially KFC fried chicken, is the- No chance. They think Americans- Oh my god, I'm not American, but I know you guys don't eat, don't eat fried chicken at, uh, at Christmas. Wait, why they, why they got this idea? That's crazy, actually. Today we'll be reacting to what other countries are told is American. Okay, this will be an interesting one. But before I go into that, uh, can I ask you for one thing? If you can leave a like, uh, thank you so much, my friend. This is the best way to show support. Uh, if you can subscribe, well, in that case, uh, forget about it. You make my day. Have that in consideration. Now, Link for the original video in my description. You guys end up suggesting this one a couple of times. Well, let's play it. Hello, friends. My name is hey. JJ. So let me show JJ. you a photo that one of my European friends sent me the other day. It's of the American food section <laughs> of his local supermarket. I forget. Okay, this happens here actually quite a lot. Sometimes uh, specific supermarkets, uh, they, they tend to have... Week of America, stuff like that. And uh, yeah, it's more or less like this. They have a shelf with uh, American things. And um, I never paid too much attention before starting this channel, I have to admit. But uh, now I pay quite more. And sometimes there is, there, uh, there is good stuff there. Get what country, but I've been to Europe enough times to know that sections like this are common all over the continent. Even though the resolution isn't that great, if you're from America, I'm sure you can make out a few products. We got goldfish, airheads, pop tarts, A1 sauce, gluten free hazelnut. Okay, so far, never tried any of those. Coffee mate. Now, the question would be whether this is actually an accurate portrayal of American food or simply a heavily exoticized one. Exoticism is a term used to describe the tendency of thinking of foreign cultures only in terms of how they differ from your own. This then leads to the habit of wrongly assuming that the weirder some foreign thing is, the more culturally traditional it must surely be. So in this case, okay. obviously Americans don't actually eat things like Oreo cereal or spreadable marshmallow fluff all that much. Wait, what? Spread... What the hell is this? But they're nevertheless marketed as being super American because such products fit a certain European stereotype of Americans as a people who eat all of this decadent, high sugar nonsense. That said, Americans are of course just as guilty of doing this as anyone. Many supermarkets over here have the so-called world food section, featuring <laughs> imported products from other countries, often presented in some equally exoticized display. Ooh, puto. Exoticizing goes hand in hand with the other phenomenon we talked about the other week. Authenticity. This is basically when you use a bunch of stereotypes of some foreign place to come up with a product or tradition that you then inaccurately present as being some normal part of their culture. Chinese fortune cookies, which are not actually a thing in China, but play what? into a certain exotic stereotype of the Chinese as mysterious fortune tellers would be a classic example. Anyway, today I thought we would look at a few examples of authentic American traditions as practiced by non-Americans over in the world and see what they can teach us about some of the interesting ways that Americans continue to be exoticized. I'm actually really curious about the, the examples. Um... So I lived in Japan briefly, and while I was there, I was able to see perhaps one of the world's most infamous faux authentic American traditions up close, fried chicken on Christmas. So Christmas is no. a pretty weird holiday for the Japanese to be celebrating in the first place, given it is not remotely a Christian country, but they do, and in a mostly superficial way that focuses on things like decorations and foods above even things like family or presents. And a lot of this superficiality, in turn, is heavily filtered through assumptions of what Americans do. And apparently the Japanese have been convinced that eating fried chicken, especially KFC fried chicken, is the- No chance. They think Americans- Oh my god, I'm not American, but I know you guys don't eat, don't eat fried chicken at, uh, at Christmas. Wait, why they, why they got this idea? That's crazy, actually. The traditional American thing. Christmas, oh when you're God. in Japan or in Christmas time, you will see big ads for special fried chicken Christmas combo deals all over the place. And a lot of Japanese kids will look forward to having a big KFC feast on December 25th. This authentic tradition. Oh man, this is insane. <laughs> what? I was not aware of this. Okay. <laughs> was supposedly the idea of just one man, Takashi Okawara 
who ran the first Japanese KFC franchise and claims to have made up the Christmas thing as a marketing gimmick in the 1970s. And after a few years, KFC for Christmas starts to get popular in Japan. And NHK, which is a national broadcaster, comes in to interview Mr. Okawara, and they want to know if KFC is an American Christmas tradition. You are selling Kentucky Fried Chicken so well in Christmas. And is the common custom in overseas? <laughs> and I would, ooh, uh, I, I know that people are not eating chicken, they're eating turkey. But I said, yes, <gasps> it was dry. No. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. I still regret that. I found a lot. Oh, this is trolling. No, is that real? That was real footage. Oh my God, that's. Okay, that's insane. A lot of Japanese people were quite shocked when I told them that no one in America actually eats fried chicken on Christmas, and that if anything, eating fast food on Christmas would be considered a fairly trashy thing in American culture. But then again, I'm sure that a lot of Americans would also be shocked to learn that Japanese people do not eat sushi with rice on the outside. Speaking of fast food... Wait, no chance, okay. Okay, got me. <laughs> they don't eat sushi with rice, okay. What? Food, another wild, authentic American thing I have experienced firsthand on my travels is the Dutch practice of eating what they call American style sauce on their french fries. You can buy it at places like McDonald's or in big bottles at the store. It's I buy this actually here. Uh, yeah, this is American, right? Oh my god, maybe not. It's not that bad. I would describe it as basically what you would get if you put mayonnaise and relish together in the blender. Sure, and even but... weirder Dutch food, however, is what they call filet American or American préparé in Belgium, which is a kind of pâté made of raw ground beef and often eaten on toast or crackers. There are a lot of theories about okay. how this weird and possibly dangerous dish became associated with Americans. But when I was there, people told me it was because during the war, there had become this stereotype that American soldiers all ate their steaks super rare. And then the Dutch beef industry just kind of ran with that. That is almost certainly an apocryphal story, but hey, apocryphal stories it's are- crazy key foundations upon which Fothentic traditions are built. In the comments section of my original Fothentic video, a bunch of my non-American friends had some fun examples of their own, of various head-scratching things they've seen marketed as being American style in their own countries. For example, some of my British viewers noted that British supermarkets sometimes sell supposed American style hot dogs yeah. in jars of brine. Load up on that big stateside flavor, proclaims this ad. But if hot dogs in jars of brine are too weird for you, they do also sell them in cans of brine as well. Hot dogs are, of course, one of the great exoticized symbols of American cuisine in much of the world, and as a result, slapping hot dogs on something is always a surefire way to market it as being American style. For example, in a lot of places, pizzas with hot dogs on them are presented as being American style pizzas. Either sliced up hot dogs, as in this- Oh my god, I never saw this. Hot dog style pizza? Oh man. It's German pizza or entire wieners, as in this one from South Korea. In Italy, meanwhile, a American pizza is apparently one with bits of hot dog and french fries. In Brazil, they What? Oh man, okay, that's amazing. <laughs> sell allegedly California style pizza with pineapple, figs, plums, and those bright red cherries they sell in cans. Okay, that sounds disgusting, sorry. Though nothing can top mm. this story from my friend Daniel. My friend was doing graduate work in Poland and went out to eat and saw American pizza on the menu. When she ordered it, it came out as a plain cheese pizza and the guy brought a can of creamed corn and poured it directly onto the pizza right there at the table. What? Many Americans who had lived or traveled abroad were equally keen to regale me with horror stories about what other countries seem to think a traditional American style breakfast entails. Among other things, they described being served breakfasts that that included stuff like baked beans, garlic bread, potato salad, and of course, hot dogs. One guy even complained about being served green orange juice in China. Talking of Asia, many of my Asian friends told me about a dish that is apparently common in many Asian countries known as American fried rice. This evidently consists of rice cooked with ketchup, corn, and raisins, accompanied by rice with ketchup. Oh no a side of various stereotypical American delicacies like hot dogs, slices of bologna, fried eggs, and chicken nuggets. Plus more ketchup. 
But my favorite story of a authentic American dish comes from my friend Camilo in Colombia. In Colombia, we have American style hot dogs, which are enormous hot dogs with a chorizo wiener topped with melted cheese, crumbled potato chips, various sauces, and quail eggs. I was able to verify this with a photo. Wait, how can they believe this is American? That, uh, actually I can see it. Oh, but the eggs, they, they, no chance. Camilo continues. We named it that because of a common belief in Latin America that people in the USA eat big size foods with a lot of toppings and all of that. You can't believe how disappointed I was when I tried an actual hot dog in the USA. All right, now let us do a lightning round of a few other much beloved, allegedly American foods from around the world. Americaners, which are German cookies with black and white icing. These similar the is that? American cakes that the Poles make, which are these little doughy lumps with frosted mm. undersides, an American sandwich or a pan American, which is some sort of beef and french fry sandwich that they sell in France. Dude, I'm not, okay, maybe that's not American, but this stuff is looking really good. American salad, which is a kind of mayonnaise and carrot salad sold in. Okay, basically the stereotype, you, you guys put a lot of sauces, right? I, I believe that's, that's the stereotype from what I'm, yeah. Spain and American dressing, a creamy sauce that the Swedes eat that's made of pickles, mayonnaise, and hot sauce and sold in tubes. Now available in bacon flavor. But authentic Americana is not just limited to food, of course. A number of my foreign friends were eager to inform me that these things, which I guess we would call red solo cups, are a subject of considerable fascination in other parts of the world where they are often sold as glamorous American party cups. Yeah, this is true. This happens here, by the way. I love this copy from this British online store. Everything about these disposable red American party cups says party. Whether you're planning a barbecue or a wild night of beer pong and American pop music, these red party cups are the perfect disposable option. Instantly okay. recognizable from a number of American films such as the American Pie series and Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, these disposable cups are durable enough for even the wildest of parties. In Brazil, Okay, let's be real. I'm sorry. If you pay a premium for that, you are dumb. I'm sorry. There is no way around it. If you live in Europe and you pay, do just buy a white cup or ship. That, that's so dumb. You know what I mean? <laughs> in America, you guys pay the, the, the normal price. And in that case, that's fine. But in here, people paying a premium for that, that's insane. However, they call a cup that looks like this an American cup. Brazilians also call placemats American sets for some reason. They have a similar situation in Italy where a placemat is known as an American tablecloth. Are placemats really that American of a thing? My friend Marcelo, meanwhile, tells me this story. I visited Chile one time and they have stores out there called American stores. These stores are actually just thrift stores, but they call them that because they mostly have American types of clothing, such as American football jerseys, American brands, American college shirts, etc. Oh, wow. It was pretty funny, to be honest. This reminds me of another wild story I can tell you from my time in Japan. There was this neighborhood in Tokyo called called Harajuku that was known for having a lot of cool hipster fashion stores. And they would have these American fashion stores where they would sell like Tommy Hilfiger and Supreme and all of that. But in order to have the full American experience, they would employ these big black guys wearing, you know, do-rags and chains and oh basketball jerseys to stand out front of the stores and beckon the Japanese people to come in. But these guys were not actually African-American, but rather literal African immigrants from places like Senegal or Ghana, who I Dude, that's a wild story. I'm sorry. Japanese people, that's, yeah, well, you guys went a bit too far. I assume were much cheaper to hire. And they would be trying to lure you into these stores with their cool American hip hop slang, but spoken through these thick African accents from people who, in many cases, clearly barely understood English. Now, in <laughs> Russia, there is nothing the kids love more than heading down to the old theme park and riding the American slide, which is what they call roller coasters over there, which is kind of ironic since in a lot of other European countries, they call roller coasters Russian mountains and the history. Yeah, that's the name we have here. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> Historians seem to agree that they were actually invented in Russia as well. But still, I'm sure Americans would much rather be associated with roller coasters than brass knuckles, 
or as the French call them, American fists. Or how about duct tape, which is called American tape in Spain. All right, now let us close with a really good summary of what is perhaps one of the best examples of a faux authentic American phenomenon that wound up going mainstream in America itself. My friend Christopher writes, I think one example of something that is a product of a foreign country's idea of American culture that America kind of reappropriated for itself is the spaghetti Western film genre. As the name suggests, the genre originated in Italy as Italian filmmakers made movies based on a largely mythical understanding of the American West. American filmmakers then began to import the style in their own films about the American West, and it proved very popular among American film goers, even if its representation of the Wild West is only... Dude, I had no idea about this one. Very loosely based on the truth. A very recent film that utilizes a lot of these spaghetti western tropes is the Quentin Tarantino film, Django Unchained. Django. The term spaghetti western is itself also quite interesting because as we discussed in the previous video, spaghetti has become one of the most Americanized Italian foods in the US. So there is something wonderfully poetic and circular about using the name of an Americanized Italian food to describe Italianized American history. Yeah, so that's I hope amazing. you enjoyed these two deep dives into the exciting world of faux authentic culture. <laughs> if you have any ideas of how I could stretch out this premise any further, please let me know in the comments. Don't forget to check out the first video if you haven't already, and I will see you next week. Okay, this video was crazy. I really, I, I was paying a lot of attention. I feel like I did not even pause that much. Oh, this one is wild. No chance. They eat the fried chicken in the, in, in the, oh no, that's wild. Oh my, Japanese people. Oh, this, this was wild. The, the chicken stuff was really wild. So this is stuff we have here. And I also thought that's the American dogs, actually. Uh, but now I feel a bit dumb. Uh, they are lying to us. 100% lying to us. And the, I have to pay a premium for the American hot dogs. How them am I? Don't answer, actually. American-style pizzas. But, sorry. No, but yeah, this was an incredible video. When I see those uh, tables, uh, shelves with uh, American stuff... Uh, I actually, I think I, I, most of the time, actually, I skip that because I know it's just them trying to, to sell you stuff. A lot of times it's not real American stuff. But yeah, thank you so much for watching, my friends. Do not forget to leave a like. See you guys next time.